you know this Academy Award nominee because of his role in Babe. James, I want to thank you for being with me. We, you've had such a long activist career, but maybe we'll move it to animals. When did you decide I'm going to stop eating meat? What made you change your mind? And I'm going to actually advocate for animals. I came across the country in, in 1975 uh, after I got back from, I hitchhiked around the world, um, literally. Um, and um, I went through the stockyards in Texas for what seemed like a whole day on my motorcycle with animals on either side, as far as you can see. And in the background, smoke billowing out of the, out of the slaughterhouse. And the stench and the cries of despair and the looks, I said, I can't, I can't do this anymore. So when I got to, to Los Angeles, uh, there wasn't really much support for vegetarianism and veganism in 75. There were lots of vegetarians, but, you know, there's a restaurant finding something that was convincing somebody that, no, you couldn't eat that uh, was very difficult. And it took me about 10 years to to finally get rid of all I can't do without corned beef hash that uh, you know I, I isolated my little now it's everybody says I can't do without cheese whatever they, right. whatever excuse they make um, it's of course a different circumstance now we know that the planet is imperiled then we didn't know that it was simply about to me it was cruelty it had not I was I was fairly fit and and I felt good so it wasn't for health reasons but of course there are health reasons when you pursue that diet um and um it it took 10 years to get my head around without deprivation around the idea that that there was another way so in a my in one small narrow band of my entire life experience which is my diet I realized that it is connected to everything is connected to it. I am connected to it. I am the recipient of both its benefits and its, and its shortfalls and its perils. So, um, and then I, I worked, uh, um, I was always a vegetarian and, and asked for vegetarian meals on the set. And then I was sent was, I went to Australia with babe and, I worked with these extraordinary animals. And then at lunchtime, they'd all be on the table uh, waiting to be eaten for lunch. And I thought, this, I'm, I'm making a movie which celebrates the idea of consciousness inhabiting all living creatures and even stones, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and that uh, if you're going to change, you've got you, you've to embrace, you've got to take it right to its limit. And the, and the limit of this is to say I renounce the use of animal products because they they can't be made under this capitalist system, which even makes honey problematic. Then you have to say, um, okay, so I'll I can I can't do much about Cargill. I can't do much about any of these large corporations. I can make a choice for my uh, myself, and I can communicate that to other people, and I can point out without being too doctrinaire, because everybody hates it when they say, you know, do you know what's in that? On the other hand, if you look at the uh, epidemic of uh, obesity that we have, where do they think that's coming from? It's coming from um, industrial agriculture and the necessity to use antibiotics and growth hormones, two different antibiotics, because it's not, it's a horrible, in, inhumane place to live in. It produces cancer. And then on the other hand, the growth hormone is you want to get them out and kill them as quickly as you can. Somebody said, oh, well, what's wrong with dairy? They're just pregnant. They, and I, they, they just get them pregnant, they said. And I said, yeah, and it's a long steel tube that there is. And I thought, oh, man, this I, – it's interesting that you would say, though, that people um, – sort of don't notice our system of which i said was toxic the relationship of the fourth estate of of the media to the to power in this country means that of course they will not question the authority and the rightness of the system in which they live because the system is that they that we live in they need in order to survive and the, the New York Times has got to have more and more subscribers, the Washington Post. Now, if they tell the unvarnished truth, 
to the people in power, the people in the power are going to say, we can just cancel you. Somebody will buy you. Mr. Bezos will buy you and will no longer ask those questions. 